Well, now how did you approach these re-recordings um, of these three tracks, knowing that Styx fans have a well a 30-year emotional attachment to the familiar original recordings? Well, to to get the songs on Rock Band, they they needed to be re-recorded so they they could actually get into the various tracks uh, tracks. So we had to uh, swiftly and quickly try to recreate um, these parts. Uh, you know, I actually played along to the original records to try and have the exact same tempos and the same you know little, little tempo modulation as they uh, delicately happen. Um, and it was something uh, like we need it by Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, it, you know, it, it was, it's a hard thing to, you know, when when you make a record, you spend a really, really long time doing it. And this, we, we, you know, we know the songs, we know, we, we, we know the, uh, the, 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 the parts and the compartments that that make up the the song. But we really had to go back to the drawing board and and, and listen to the originals to try to lovingly recreate them. Todd, Todd ripped through his parts really quickly, and they, they sounded they sounded very close to the original, but still had that his his stamp on them as well. For me, I I found it more difficult really because I unlike being on stage where I'm able to allow my own personality and the fact that I'm physically there uh, carry a lot of it uh, to whatever extent that is. I I felt with this it had to be as true to the original as possible. And yet, um, you know, like any great record that's been made for any for many great artists, you begin to notice there are a few little flaws there, and do we keep them or do we kind of stick handle around them uh, to some degree? And that was the balancing act that we had to strike, and hopefully we got it we got it as right as we could. And and I'm I'm pleased with the sound of the results. And whenever there were stacked harmonies with J Y and Tommy, and just adding my voice in there, uh, that seemed to work fine to my ear. And but they you know they kept kind of fine-tuning it, and uh, uh, I, I stand by it as being uh, very good, uh, you know, new renditions of the songs. Very good. Uh, J.Y. is on that stuff, is that right? J.Y., uh, yes, you, through the through the magic of uh, flying stuff in, he was able to do his guitar solos, yes. Oh, okay, okay. I, what about the what about the Can't Stop Rocking? Because I noticed in the video he's not in the video. He just couldn't make it to the studio on that day. That was all there was to it. Oh, okay, okay, right. Um, how's his wife been doing? Coming along very well. Um, you know, she's uh, in, in a, probably ahead of schedule as far as getting everything uh, back on track again. And we, we, we hope to see her basically as soon as she can possibly come out with us again. And uh, and she will. You know, she's already been out to a couple of shows, and she will probably see her again in Chicago and maybe a few other things. So she's really recovering nicely, and JY has done an unbelievable job of, of, you know, being with the band and helping to uh, to bring her back to full health. Well, good for them. Now, is, is he going to be able to make all the dates this summer, then, you think? Uh, we, we are counting on it. Good, good. What was it like playing that, uh, was it two shows that you played without him, or was it just one? What was it? Was it two? We did a couple. Four? I think, we did, we, did, I think oh, we did four shows. Might have been. But that was, that was very early on in this, uh, you know, uh, last... Late last summer. That was in the first couple of weeks of, of her having had the uh, the aneurysm. So, um, yeah, what was it like? Well, first yeah. of all, we decided let's make JY present on the stage by having his guitar in its regular spot, his microphone, everything about his setup was intact as if he was about to walk on the stage. And that put us in the right frame of mind to go out and actually do what we did. And uh, we asked the audience right up front, look, JY can't make it because of this uh, family um, medical emergency. There's only four of us here, and if you want us to play the show, we're we're happy to go ahead with it, or we can reschedule it. And people were like, "Play now, play now!" Yeah, the audience, yeah. the audience was totally on on your side yeah. in a situation like that. Cool, cool. What was it like getting around that musically? Did you have a, any chance to rehearse without him? Uh, a brief chance to rehearse. I mean, we added a couple of songs that we, you know, we added "Boat on the River" and we added uh, "Sing for the Day." Sing for the day. And, uh, you know, anything that, that, that we could get, I mean, we couldn't do um, Miss America in those shows. Um, I was able to, to sing Lorelei, and I was able to cover the rhythm guitar part in the middle part of Sweet Madam Blue. And Todd added vocals, we, too. We brought the boom <laughs> mic back behind the drum set. Todd, Todd had his mic back, and he was singing through the whole show. And so, you know, we did what we could. Um, people stood up at the end and yelled. 
I think it was approvingly because when we came back for a couple of encores, they seemed to be fine with it, and uh, they, I mean, they sent their their their, their strength to JY and. Uh, Obviously, he must have received it. I, I remember the first experience, us just looking at each other like, this is this is crazy. This feels crazy to take the stage without J.Y. And I think we all had, you know, had, had butterflies uh, in our tummies. Um, and it was, a, 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 you know, sort of a sense of a, accomplishment to walk off, off stage thinking, well, that went as good as it could possibly, possibly go. go. That's right. Right, right. Yeah. So we, it's not something I'd want to make a habit of, but <laughs> no. we got through it. And uh, the audience uh, were with us. So. Very good, very good. Now, I took some questions from the Internet to prepare for this interview. So uh, one of them comes from Manos from Greece, and he says, will you return to Europe? I, cer- I certainly uh, certainly hope so. Um, I hope that we, we return uh, next year. I, I'm, I'm a strong opponent of, uh, of, of wanting to go there and, and, and ship away in Europe. It's just it's a fantastic place to play. Yeah, we've been there a couple of times. It goes over spectacularly well. And last year we ended, uh, the last time we were there, we ended with uh, you know, with a show at Wembley in London. And that's really come, uh, everything's come a long way there, you know, for, for the band. Because it had been, you know, prior to our going there, they hadn't been in Europe for 25 years. And so, right, the band never really broke there the way it Right, and, and they, there's tons of fans there, and they loved us at the Swedish Rock Festival, and, and we get a lot of messages of, of people really wanting us to go and play there, and we would love to. And it's just one of the one of the beauties of being in this band is there's an insatiable appetite for them to play, for us to play everywhere, and... Um, and it's just we're actually trying to do that. <laughs> and it's just fun to say Wembley. And it is. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun word, Wembley. <laughs> there I <it is>. said. <laughs> okay. So uh, I wanted to ask you this because each of you are the quote unquote new guys in Sticks. As far as you know, uh, you've only been there ten and fifteen years, respectively. Uh, does it has it been that long? Wow. That perception yeah. in a classic rock band we still qualify as the new guys yeah exactly yeah. exactly do you still get annoyed with that perception and, and the fact that there are still fans that want to judge this band for what it isn't rather than what it is oh i mean no there any fan of the band is entitled to their opinion as far as i'm concerned and uh you know that that range is <laughs> completely uh, all over the map, and so no, I don't mind feeling like I'm still the new guy. Tommy said it was a uh, it's, a it's a load off his mind not to be referred as the new to as the new guy anymore because he was still referred to as that after he, when he was into the band for his third decade. Right. So, um, how do you feel, Todd? Uh, yeah, I feel it as you do. Although somehow I still harbor a resentment that Fritz Rainer is no longer conducting the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened to them since. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'll tell you going funny. back to 1956, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you something funny, you know, back around 1990, that's funny what Todd's saying. I read a quote from Rick Wakeman saying, you know, there could be a yes a hundred years from now. And uh, he, he sees it as being possible, just as the London Symphony still exists today as they did a couple of hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. As too many. There are, we, we, we are grappling with that notion of uh, can bands uh, take on new members? Well, if Genesis can survive when Peter Gabriel wasn't up front, I never thought that could happen. Right. Van Halen survived without uh, David Lee Roth. I didn't think that could happen. Pink Floyd toured and toured well without Roger Waters. That, to me, was uh, unbelievable. And uh, there are many other examples, and I suppose we are one of them, and we're trying to do uh, you know, the best that we can at making, uh, making that be as... Uh, as right as it can possibly be, and for us, it feels totally 100 percent right, you know. And, and it's up to the others to uh, to uh, voice their opinions. Right, right. 